you'd be in big trouble for being here. But welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Lee, you're watching Barham Engines. <laughs> So it's bank holiday Friday, had yesterday off, been climbing the walls already because we've got the three kids at home. And I said to my missus, look, I'm gonna have to go down there and make a video. I know all our viewers are gonna be sitting there with severe sunstroke tonight, dying to watch one of our videos. So I'm just gonna have to go down there for an hour. She's not happy, but hey ho. Just how dedicated I am to the channel, I guess. Right, so I thought I'd come down here and I'd just show you what we've got going on, run through a few of the jobs that we've got for next week. Um, also, the Jaguar over there. So after the last video of showing me assembling this bottom end, I did read through some of the comments and there was there was a few of you guys that were sort of alarmed that I'd, that I'd put the pistons and rods down the holes before we put the crank in. Now... With this type of engine, that all the bearings are colour coded, the crank we haven't ground. Now, if we ever grind a crankshaft and we get aftermarket bearings, then we always fit the crank first. Um, you, you know, you can never tell whether there's going to be a tight spot or whatever. But with this engine, nothing changed. We didn't. All we did was polish the crank. It was. They're colour-coded bearings. They're all blue on the mains, all blue on the big ends. So, to be honest, we've built lots of this modern-type engine in the past. It was like the, the last one we did a bit like this V8-wise was the M5 BMW. So, with them being colour-coded, you know, we measure the cranks. I didn't show that on a video, but, we, you know, we obviously measure it all and make sure it's all perfect. We put it all in, and to be honest... Although the pistons and rods are nipped up, um, they're not torqued up because obviously we've got to change the bolts. But when you try and turn this, all you feel different is a bit of resistance from the rings down the down the holes there. Um, apart from that, you can feel, you know, you've got to bear in mind how many engines we've built. You can feel if there's going to be any tight spot. So if I just turn this engine through 360 degrees... You can feel that that is absolutely, apart from the resistance on the pistons, it's absolutely free. So I'll be honest with you guys, it's not going to feel hardly any different without those pistons and rods in. You can feel the cranks as free as anything. But bear in mind, we've got to change. These mains are only nipped down because obviously, obviously we put sealant on there. Um, we're just going to change these centre mains, um, the centre main bolts, and torque it down and feel it then. But it's one of those it's um it feels absolutely fine you you just tend to get to know what these things will feel like if there's a tight crank it's not going to feel like that you know um so yeah don't worry guys this thing will be absolutely fine right so this cosworth the reason we haven't finished this is because one we had two deliveries actually from burton on um wednesday something very weird about this now I have heard about this in the past, but I've never actually had a cylinder head with it here before. Although we've had tons and tons of cylinder heads, I've never actually had one with it. So basically going back to the beginning, when we strip this head out, obviously when we strip it out, you just, you take the cams out, lay it all out as we've done here. Um, you, you take the old buckets out because we're never going to replace them anyway. We just, we're never going to put the old ones back in. We always replace them with new ones. So we've ripped all that out. Obviously, you inspect everything. Um, we soda blast the head, you know, and the ports and all this. Then we take the guides out. We fit new guides. We inspect the head, obviously, and pressure test it. So these two bucket housings here, if you have a look at them, absolutely as you would expect to see. Um, same as all the rest. So visibly, we have a look. Make sure there's no scorings and all the rest of it. Now, <laughs> yeah, I've fitted this head. You know, I've done the guides. I've cut the seats, all the rest of it. The head's all ready to go back on. I've fitted the head. And I suppose it's my own fault, really, for fitting the head before I've put all the buckets in. But that's just the way we do things most of the time. If it all visibly looks okay and it pressure tests okay, then, you know, it's okay. But... These two bucket housings here, I don't know whether any of you have heard, in the past, especially on the old two-wheel drives, they used to suffer with picking up a little bit on the on the bucket housings. And what they do is they 
ream or bore these housings out and then they actually did an oversized hydraulic lifter. The next thing I've done once I've talked it all down is I've gone to put the buckets in. I put all the buckets in, they all feel absolutely lovely. This is an original bucket. Put it in the hole and it flops about like a prick in a bucket and I thought, hang on a minute, what the hell is going on here? So obviously I've took them out and it, you think, well, they kind of want, but it looks perfect. Anyway, then it twigged. They did an oversized bucket back in the day and I thought, oh dear, I fitted this head. What on earth am I going to do? Now, after doing a bit of homework, I managed to get in touch with Graham Good Racing. They actually stock an original set of oversized buckets. Um, so these are the oversized buckets. Luckily, they go straight in. So wipe the sweat off my brow. That saved us. Otherwise, I'd have had to remove the head and we'd have had to do something about that. That would have been turned into a lot more hours, a bit more of a major job. So, yeah, I know there's only two there that have been obviously bored out in the past and we're not putting a complete set. But I rang the customer. I said, look, we've got two options. One, I can buy this set of buckets that are oversized or we can sleeve these. That was another thing. But then again, it's not it's not going to be original anyway. So he was happy to buy the buckets and we'll keep some spare in case he ever needed to change them. And um, we'll just put the two oversized ones in. So that's a lot easier. And uh, that's what he wanted to do. So that's what we're doing. Um, it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. They're only, as I say, they're only a bit oversized. But yeah, a bit scary for a minute, guys. I put them in and I thought, oh dear, oh dear, what has happened here? Anyway, we've got all the rest of the bits. Um, this thing has obviously suffered with some sort of oil starvation in the past because obviously it's had some work down there, whether that's anything to do with that. But these bearings here on the end of the cam are absolutely, you see that, absolutely mullered. That's the worst I've ever seen. To be honest, usually they look a bit grotty and they feel a bit bad, but they never get like that. So we've ordered some new bearings, which are going to go in there. Got all the rest of the bits now. So this was really all we needed. We've got some new exhaust nuts and washers, um, the turbo studs and nuts. We've got the turbo gasket, always fit one of those on the T3 or the T34. The bearing stays for the front of the cam and a new, always may as well buy one of these. It saves cleaning the old one up really. They do a nice sort of um, plated one and a new tensioner stud. So that is all we've been waiting for on this. You've seen in my last video, did the machine on this rocker cover. You see that's come out really nice. Makes just makes it look a little bit more fresh. So we can get our sticker on the front of here now and he can remove that if he wants. But yeah, that looks really nice. So I'm happy with that. So next week, guys, we'll have all this one built back up. All we've got to do is put the sump on. You see, I put the pump on. Now the pump, I'll be honest, very, very rarely do we ever put a, a Cosworth pump back on that come in. But because he swapped the bottom ends over and then run into this problem with the head gasket, which is obvious because the, the block face was horrendous and so was the head, he basically put a new pump on it. So I took that pump off, I've stripped it out, and it is absolutely brand new. There's no marks on that whatsoever. So we're just not going to benefit from putting a new pump on there. That is a brand new pump. So I have put that back on there. Um, everything else has been replaced, though. Put a new thermostat in there with the thermostat kit. We've got that other Cosworth that's turning up. Next, well, will be next week. I've had a bit of a palaver with the with the courier trying to pick the bloody pallet up. But anyway, that should be with us next week. So get that one finished. I spoke to Vince at Turbo Performance and that one over there is still waiting on that turbo. And he said he's literally only just had the front compressor housing. So he's promised me that for... Tuesday I think it is so by the end of next week we should have both of these out we can get that other one on here and that's um we sort of down to one Cosworth in progress except for the one over there which we're still waiting for pistons and rods but when that turns up that's just a short engine so that's all the Cosworths up to date really I think what I'm going to be doing next on the agenda is sorting this Evo out because this has been sitting here for ages the block's all prepped and ready to go and ball but He's going to have to buy some new pistons, to be honest. I said, look, we've measured them and they're all over the place. I've just got to text him over the, the sizes of what they are. And then he's going to go away and order them, get them sent to me. And I can get this thing put back together, really, because the head's all done. 
Yeah, so the head's all down here looking fresh. So we can get that one put back together and out the way. But yeah, we're sort of catching up a bit, guys. It seems a little bit lately that all we seem to be doing is turning down work because we've got people emailing left, right and centre. Some days I'm getting five or six emails a day for engines to be sent in. So we're going to crack on with the Jag. Got all the crank assembly balance now sitting down there. So this one here is going to be put back together, hopefully next week. All this lot will be gone then. Once we get this this thing bolted up with a new talked up with a new bolt that can go over to Stuart so this area here will be all pretty much free so I feel a little bit of pressure off that we're getting most of this stuff done we've got a stack of work down here we've got this Rover V8 which I had Paul Dove in on Wednesday he's very kindly blasted all this and cleaned it up this was in a right old pickle this year so he spent most of the day cleaning this this thing is a V8 Rover so We've just got to do machining on that, thankfully. So now Paul's done all the cleaning. I can get this board, face the block. Um, he's already cleaned up the valves, so I shall soda blast the, the ports and whatever you and cut the seats on that. He said the guides are okay. So once we've done that, that's that job done. We've got a <laughs> we've got another 4.2 Jag engine here, which we've got to do some machining on and, and what have you. But that's, as I say, don't mind the machining. That's sort of in and out work get that done we've got a Volkswagen here we've got a load of work to do on this one we've got to bore it plus two mil I think for some got some uh, JE pistons over there we've got the rods to sort out we've got to fit a uh, a cradle plate on the back of the block yeah got quite a lot to do on that but again that's machining I love that sort of stuff that's in and out so yeah we're we're finally sort of getting getting in some sort of order here guys and hopefully be able to get quite a lot of stuff out the door the sunbeam here which john has pretty much finished i think i haven't had a lot to do with that we've had to have rods and what have you made for that so that's a big old job cost the guy quite a lot of money but only got to do the short engine and i think that's pretty much done so that's one of those things that's become a bit of a part of the furniture really but be glad to see the back of that oh one other thing we've had the pistons these are the new JP Pistons for the Healy. So that's all we've been waiting for on the Healy. So this is another motor that we can crack on with. So I'm really open now, within the next couple of weeks, we can get rid of that short motor. Most of this stuff's done. Um, the Cosworth over there, which I've done the short motor, all I've got to do is fit the trick manifold and dowel that on there um, onto the head. And that job is done. He's going to pick that up in July. We can get this one sorted. We've got that V8, which is in progress, but that's no major rush on that. The car's been restored. So we're going to start that as soon as the rest of the stuff's tied up. This can go hopefully soon. Um, this Cosworth, the Cosworth at the back. This Jag we're going to get on with in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, the, the V8 Jag, that will be gone next week, almost certainly. Yeah, really happy with the progress, guys. We've even got a bit of space over there to put some other stuff now, which is unheard of in the last couple of months. In the next two or three weeks, be able to do some good videos on us getting involved with some builds. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Don't get too sunburnt, and I'll see you in another one. Take care.